Alright, there are a couple of things that I want to fix up in this lesson. Firstly, if you look at Bob, he looks pretty much exactly the same as Bill. In fact, I've heard that only their mothers can tell them apart. And what's more, if we bring in another bot into the game and avoid his plasma beam, you can see that he looks almost the same as Bill and Bob. So what we need is a way for the player to differentiate between Bill and Bob so they can work out um, who they are currently uh, possessing and also a way to tell the difference between Bill, Bob and all of the enemies in the game. Uh, so to do this I'm going to come in here. Uh, the nodes have been um, just slightly rearranged. I've just lined everything up and uh, uh, just so that it, everything flows and can be followed a lot easier and it also looks pretty. Now in order to um, tell these guys apart I'm just going to change the textures of the characters. So I'm going to go to uh, new action, actor, set material and I will just cancel that out. Now, the um, character that I want to uh, set the material for is Bob. And I need a new material to plug into this node. So I'll come into the content browser. I'm just going to search for material instances constants. You can see the C there. And I'm going to type in C O double R first four letters in the word corrupt. Corrupt is the name of the model that we are using for our characters in UDK. Now there are two types of textures. There's a head texture and a body texture for each of these models. I'm going to choose the red um, body uh, texture for the corrupt. Uh, these are the team textures of red and blue. I'm going to make Bob the red robot and Bill the blue robot. So with the red material instance constant selected, I'm going to reopen Kismet and I'm going to put that in the new material slot. And now if we test it out, Bob is red. Bill's still brown. We can fix that up now. So I'm just going to copy this and break all links break this link oh, nearly did it come from finish and here to attach it to event and the character for this one is going to be Bill Now, under materials, I could look for the other material in uh, the content browser, but I know the naming convention, and I'm just going to change red to blue. And now, if we test this out, Bob is red, Bill is blue. Stylish. And every other character in the game will default to brown. Now the next thing that I want to tackle is this trigger here. If we look at this in Kismet, its max trigger count is set to 1, meaning it can only be triggered once. Well, I'm going to set the max trigger count to 0, which is the same as saying that it can be triggered an infinite number of times. Uh, the reason for this is if uh, one of our characters dies, uh, or if the player dies, he can respawn and then bring in another version of Bob. So he can bring in another clone. I'll just see this in action. So here we go. I've dug a hole. And uh, now what I'm going to do is jump in with Bill and switch over to Bob. So I'm now Bob, and Bill 
has just fallen to his death. So I'm Bob, the red character. I'm going to come up here and spawn another character. But I'm Bob, so what's going to happen? Well, we're going to get another red character, and he is going to be Bob. If we swap over, you can see that the old character is now blue. And in fact, if we swap to him, he is now Bill, not Bob. He was Bob before he pressed that trigger. That's because that trigger, as well as bringing in Bob, sets whoever touches this trigger to being Bill, the blue robot. So, how do we get around that? Well, uh, one way to do it is uh, whenever Bill or Bob dies, the other character also dies. Um, let's say that uh, when the character's um, ability to swap between Bill and Bob is, um, is set up, that causes a link where if one dies, the other will die. You know, sort of like an old married couple. And so, in order to set that up, I am going to attach a new event to Bob. So I'll just um, copy this and paste it. And I will break that link because I don't want it to be the take damage. And so after we set up the take damage attached to event, we're going to attach another event to Bob. And that event, under new event, of course, is pawn death. And so, let's move these up a little bit. When Bob dies, I want Bill to also die. And the way to get um, Bill to die is I'm going to modify his health. Essentially, I'm going to cause a lot of damage to Bill. And I'm just going to make sure that Bill is the target. And the amount of health will be 1,000 points. There's no coming back from that. Okay, and the damage type I will set to crushed. Because let's face it, if your soulmate just died, you'd be pretty crushed. So let's see if that worked. Now, Bob is the only one with the um, with the kill switch enabled. And so we'll have to switch, switch to Bob and jump down the hole with Bob and swap over to Bill to see if it works. And there we go. It worked. As soon as Bob hit the bottom, Bill died. And now, if we respawn, we know that we are Bill and we spawn in Bob. And so I will just quickly come in and set this up for the other character. And so what I might do is just move all of these guys up. Control C, Control V. Move these down. Set that up. Virus database has been updated. I think my virus database has been updated. And what I'm going to do is just swap these over. And so there we go. Everything is set up.